Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, I'm going to give you a bit of demo using animation nodes and spare chalk add-on. Basically, what I'm trying to do is um, to use Blender to take real-time audio and then turning it into some kind of uh, quick animations or just a, just a way to kind of like a model. Like um, by using my audio, my voice, um, I'm gonna perform something that's real time and it's gonna take the data and then turning it into something else. So basically that's the idea. It's supposed to be simple and this is possible because Blender has Python built in and as long as the Python actually uh, matching whatever mo uh, module that you are using, uh, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna open my file. Uh, aha, okay. There's, a, there's one gotcha. Right away, you can see here, animation nodes doesn't work because I'm using <clears throat> the latest, latest Blender. This is Blender 2.79, but this is for Blender 2.8 branch, which means that if I check on the Python console, it's 3.6.2. <clears throat> and this guy is a bit newer. Like the, the, the Python use in this Blender is newer. Be careful with this. Um, so I need to go go back to older blender um, I think I have it somewhere here it's under applications blender app so basically <clears throat> blender python version needs to, to match the one that I have outside so what I mean is that if we open up another console here and then if I type in Python and you can see this is Python 3.5.4 this should match this guy and this blender also um, animation nodes add-on works with a 3.5.4 version of Python okay so now I have um, animation nodes working there and first I'm, I'm gonna give a demo with a spread chalk add-on um, I think I have two script here there's a recording pi audio okay first of all for this two works you need to have um, pi audio module installed somehow on your external Python okay so that's the kind of the tricky one sometimes but really if uh, if you look for the documentations out there, uh, it just take a bit of effort. Basically, you need to be able to install the module properly, and you know that it's working if you import the Py audio using Python external Python. It, it works. And in here, I believe I have the setup uh, Py audio setup. Let me check real quick. I think this is the one for animation nodes and there's another one for spread chop. Let me try to quickly read it. Um, let me try actually just run this one so basically this is a rather short Python script right it's uh, it's looking at the external Py audio module outside of blender and then if it did, um, if it's not already loaded inside blender just load it and then using numpy and then this is the part that I modified slightly um, let me try actually run this one testing testing this is a quick test and it should be you can see here it's uh, actually reading my voice and then it's kind of outputting a bunch of data right um, yeah I think I set it up a bit long uh, okay that's a few seconds there but this is the data that's being spit out using this um, setup there is another one here it's 
stream output. Well, I think it's recording too that I need. So this guy, with this guy, I, I made it so that uh, it's gonna print out a bunch of data and then from that bunch of data, I'm gonna copy and paste it so a Blender uh, spread chalk can actually read the data. So let's, let me try again. I'm gonna run this for three seconds. So run this script. So Blender is now uh, currently on halt, but I can just keep talking for a few seconds and it's done already. So if I look at the printout in the console, I have like a four, more than 47,000 line of data. And this is based on my real-time voice. Okay, let me try to find the first data, but there you go, that's the one copy currently this is how this is how i'm doing it copy paste the data and then i just reload there you go that's the data that i just recorded this is real time voice and this is the data you can see this the first one is a number the the, the other one is actually my voice data that goes ups and down uh, it's integer type of data so and I load it using text in in Spreadshop and then I'm using this data <clears throat> the ups and downs of my voice wave and plug it into the z-axis while the x-axis simply just uh, kind of like growing in x positive x-axis and yeah you can see it's a, it's a bunch of points and I can easily convert it into anything so that's uh, if I'm using Spreadshock add-on. Spreadshock is really good for this, basically to quickly visualize data. That's one way I think of Spreadshock. Secondly, I will be using anim animation nodes, right? Um, for this, I have to turn off Spreadshock processing just so it doesn't take, it doesn't calculate anything. I'm gonna switch to animation nodes. And for animation nodes, I have this node three, it's just a basic script that's looking at this script. Currently, um, the setup is not, it's not actually um, ideal yet. It works simply by, if I'm running the timeline, it's gonna execute and it's gonna execute this script and using Pi audio module, reading my audio, through the microphone of my MacBook Pro and then turning it into animations and hopefully drive Susan head. Okay, so let me try doing that. Testing, test, one, test, two, one, three, two, three, test, test, test. test. Okay, there's actually my voice. I You can see Blender is now frozen, but I'm still recording. Um, Let's wait a few seconds. I, I, I think something wrong with my script. Basically, the way it uh, it works currently is that I, I'm recording and I'm I actually also um, creating keyframe, and I know my script is not ideal. It's basically I think I have I'm creating a new audio objects for every frame. Um, ideally, this should be more like um, a task for game engine. But because the way Blender works currently, it's a, um, I'm actually recording only if the frame is um, kind of advancing. So for every frame, it's gonna take my voice and turning it into this Susan head animations. It's a, it's a little bit strange, but uh, I know this, this code can be improved so that it should actually run by itself without me having to advance the frame. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like, a, an interesting experiment. So I just keep it running until the end. Maybe I stop it right now. So I stop the animation. I'm gonna just delete, um, not delete, I turn off animation nodes. You can see with Suzanne head here, this guy now has animations. If I switch to graph editor and look at Suzanne, hopefully I can see, I can see it being keyframe the animations I might be wrong I yeah I didn't set it up properly oh, okay I know why 
I made a mistake. I should actually bake the keyframe here. So let me try again. Just 200 frames. Baking the keyframe and if I'm doing this correctly, the f uh, now I'm actually recording and also keyframing and you can see Susan head uh, is kind of wobbling. Uh, is that now Blender is frozen again. Yeah, I think it's uh, my Python script here. It's, uh, it's not quite correct. Okay, by the way, the Python script was actually taken from one website. If you search for Python real-time audio, you will find this script and then what I did was slightly modify it so it works with Blender. So now you can see here the animation works. I mean the, the baking. Using my voice, my real-time voice, it generates this uh, keyframe animations. So in a way, it's almost like um, driven, you know, set driven key or drivers, what do you call it? If you can code it using Python and create the drivers that run in real time, it's going to be a lot easier. But uh, I'm doing it using nodes because it, it makes sense for me, you know. it's a, If you are just using Python, if you know, you are not a coder, it's, a, it's a little bit harder to imagine how this works. But uh, because I'm using nodes and basically I'm just piping the value and remapping the value here. So for the value of between 1 and 100, I'm using it to drive Susan scale, Susan head scale uh, value. And then I bake it using animation nodes. This is, so this is the process that I'm, um, I'm trying to show you. Um, yeah, so it's quite interesting. It's kind of, uh, I don't know what this is can be useful yet, but uh, real-time audio is cool. Anything that's currently in, um, that you can do in real time is actually really cool. It's a big thing because we are entering, you know, an era of AR and VR. So it has to be, everything needs to be real time, ideally at 60 frames per second. So uh, I want to have a couple of experiments that's actually using this kind of real time method, maybe like using my iPhone to see the 3D, the real world and then pipe the data into Blender in real time. It's probably not going to be easy because Blender needs to be like maybe Blender 2.8 uh, with an EV engine maybe can do it or maybe if I'm using like, like Unity, Unreal or like Godot engine in Blender maybe that's possible or or even like a JavaScript 3D uh, whatever it's a there's a lot of um, a lot of options there. So anyhow, this is just a quick demo. Once again, I'm using Spreadshock add-on nodes and animation nodes to perform this uh, real-time audio demo. So hopefully this is useful for you. I'll give you the blend for you to have a look. It's a bit messy, but uh, take a look at it anyway. Uh, it's going to be useful for you, hopefully. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.